Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Uh, wow. What a message today we have in store for you. And uh, the, the crux of this message here, I'm going to share with you here on Israeli News Live. But if you're the diehard that wants to know even deeper, join us over on patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. You'll be able to see the entirety there. But the gist of things that we're going to go into here at the beginning of the message, you get to listen to here, right here on Israeli News Live, an amazing insight, one that I've never spoke about before, one I never knew about before. Let's just face the facts on that there. I want to take as, uh, you know, this picture here is a depiction of just Moses writing there, uh, but it just kind of reminds me of when John wrote in his gospel, chapter 5, going to verses 44 to 47, how can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? What a powerful statement. Generally speaking, when people hear that, they think of Deuteronomy chapter 15, or chapter 18, I should say. Verse 15, A prophet will the Lord thy God raise up unto you from the midst of thy brethren, liken unto me. Unto him you shall hearken, or listen. According to all that you didst desire of the Lord thy God in Horeb. Keep that in mind, by the way. In the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. Hold that in your mind as well. And the Lord said unto me, They have well said that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, liken unto you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, he shall speak that he shall which he shall speak in my name, I'll require it of him. But the prophet that shall speak a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. Hmm. That one is something that people need to really hearken to. Because that's going on on a regular basis as if God doesn't even hear. But, you know, that's just one place that Moses wrote about Jesus. There's another place, and we're going to go to that in just a few moments. I shared with you over here out of the book of John here just a moment ago where Jesus said, Even one accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, now there's the plural, how shall you believe my words? I've always believed that Moses had to have wrote of Jesus more than just one place. And I was right. In Deuteronomy chapter 33, I have it in the Hebrew and in the English opened up for you. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints from his right hand, went a fiery law for them. 
Yea, he loved the people, all his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet, every one shall receive of thy words. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. Let's look at this in Hebrew for just a moment, if you would. In verse 4, Moses commanded us a law, an inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. All right, Moses commanded us a law. Torah, Tzivala nu Moshe. That's Moses commanded us a law. It's kind of flip-flop the way it goes in Hebrew there. The word Torah is what everybody knows to be the law. Very few places in the entire scripture is there an English word law and then another word for the Hebrew word other than Torah. Most commonly is son-in-law, brother-in-law, father-in-law, daughter-in-law. All those law ones there have their own unique word. And it's not Torah. Also, in one place in all scripture, and I actually thought for a while that it was in no other place other than in the book of Daniel, Esther, and um, there's one other one other place, I forget, Ezra, was, was the word dot used, dalit tav which literally means decree. It's generally spoken of as a king's decree. When a king gives forth a message. Well, I found the one obscure place in the book of Deuteronomy where Moses actually spoke of it. And it's right here in verse 2. He says here, at his right hand was a fiery law unto them. There it is right there. A fiery law was a fiery law. Now, here's what's fascinating. One, it doesn't say at his right hand, just at his right. It could be his right side. It could be his right hand. After all, we know that when Jesus rose up and to set at the majesty, he sat where? At his right hand. That's an interesting thought, isn't it? Mimenu, there it is right there, at his right. Ishdat. Now, this is a repeat already. They highlight it themselves. They break it up as two words there. But right here in Hebrew, it's written as one word. H, actually, Eshdat is the right way to pronounce it. Eshdat. A fire, a fiery decree. They translate it was a fiery law unto them. But it's a king is who gives a decree. Jesus Christ was the king of Israel. And so, yes, remember what God says over in Deuteronomy. They didn't want God to speak to them anymore. They were afraid. Remember what I said for you to remember over here? They said, let not God speak uh, to us. Because why? They were afraid. Let's see. I told you to remember a couple of things and I forget where they're at now. So let me see if I can find them. Here we go, right here. Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore that I die not. Notice. He's going to raise up unto you from the midst of thy brother and liken unto me, unto him you shall hearken according to all that you did desire of the Lord thy God on Horeb, 
in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. This great fire, when God came down, he came down with the Ten Commandments. He wrote with the finger of God like a burning fire. He wrote the Ten Commandments on the stones. Wow. Didn't he say, though, that he would no longer, it would no longer be a commandment written in stone, but it would be written on the tables of your heart? I can believe that, because if you think about it, over in the book of Acts, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What was it? It was the very fire of Almighty God, His Spirit coming down and dwelling within the human heart of mankind. He was burning His law within their hearts. No longer on tables of stone. Not at all. But now in the heart of man. See, they didn't want to see that great fire anymore. So there in Deuteronomy chapter 18, Moses wrote of Jesus. And then when we get all the way over here to Deuteronomy 33 and his departure, he's writing of him again. He came from the, he came from the myriads of, ho of the holy ones, right? Now, I, I put it over here in the King James too because sometimes they just kind of word it a little bit easier for you to understand. He shined forth from Mount Paran. He came with ten thousands of saints. Just calls them Kodesh, the holy ones. Ten thousands of saints from his right hand went a fiery law for them. Why? They didn't want to hear God no more. So he said he would raise up a prophet like unto him. So no wonder why it comes forth a fiery, but in this case, it's not called a Torah, but a dot. Esh dot. Why? Because he's the king. The king of Israel has now spoken, and what he speaks, it is a decree that goes forth from his lips. This is so astonishing in my mind, right? goes on, yea, he loveth the peoples, all his holy ones. They are that in thy hand, and they sit down at, at thy feet, receiving of thy words. Moses commanded us the law and inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. You see, that was the Torah. But the king has come. A prophet raised up likened unto Moses and he give a fiery decree because why? He is the king of Israel. And they took and they, and they did what? They sit at his feet receiving of his words. Boy, it doesn't have, I mean, how many times in scriptures they take and they, they would come out of there by the thousands there uh, around the Galilee and they'd, Jesus would sit down and they'd all just, they'd sit at his feet and listen to him, the precious words that come from his mouth. Both Israelites and on the side of Syria, they did the same. On the side of Syria, they'd touch his garment and said they just wanted to be able to touch him. And every one of them that touched him were healed. I did that earlier. And, and um, let's see. Let me just put it right here. Um, set. Let me see. Feet. I think that's how I did it earlier. Let's see. Um, nope. Uh, set. We got here also set at Jesus' feet and heard his word. There's one right there. Luke chapter 10, verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Isn't that amazing right there? There, there actually earlier when I was looking up, there were so many, I, there was no way to put them up all on the screen for you. But now to take the time to find them all again is very difficult. But see, she sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. What does it say here? And they sit down at thy feet receiving of thy words. 
<clears throat> Just absolutely amazing. All right, listen, for those of you that are wanting to go deeper, join me over on Patreon. Uh, we're going to go a little deeper with you guys here. Those of you that are watching here on Israeli News Live, God bless you. Thank you for listening today. Um, and, and two, if you're going to be down in Atlanta, we're going to Atlanta to the uh, It's a Life Wave Conference. It's just one evening only. You have to be there at 730. If you're not a distributor, you, you get to come in for free. And you get the Tri X 39 for free. They'll give you one to try for yourself if you want. If you don't, you don't have to. Um, and but we're gonna be there, so we're hoping that you'll be there. If you, especially if you're just, you're wanting to, you've been thinking about trying it, you just haven't decided yet, or you've thought about this even as a business, and or maybe you are doing it as a business, and you really want to know more about how that really works, listen, this is definitely the place for you to be. Uh, you're going to hear from doctors. You're going to see uh, people, testimonies. You know, I'm, I'm kind of giving you an idea what I think because I've been to one meeting already like that. It, it was really, really a blessing to be there. I was shocked at the number of believers, Christians. Uh, I met one minister there who who's, does very well with doing this uh, as a business as well, but he cared more about the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that blessed my heart. In fact, I'm going to have him on sometime here uh, to share some of his insights from a book he just wrote uh, on faith. So, But anyway... If you're able to make it, I'll put all the details in the description below. It's tomorrow night, or excuse me, yeah, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 7.30. I know it's at the uh, uh, Hilton in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, I'll put those details in the description below. If you're a distributor, it's only $5. Uh, I think you pay at the door if I'm not mistaken as well. Anyway. Hopefully, we'll see you there. If you're able to email me, you're coming. Do email me. Benun, B-E-N-N-U-N, X39 at gmail.com. I'll put that in the description. Just remember, I can't put the at sign because for some reason, YouTube doesn't like you to put your email there. God bless you. Thank you for listening. All right. For those of you that wanted to continue on... We're going to continue on then. Um, the thing was about this, and I know this is a real blessing because if you had any idea what I went through physically to get to this message, you would know those archons did not want me bringing this message out to you today. Uh, I've gone over some of this with you already before. But we need to go deeper, okay? We see there that Jesus gives a mimenu from his right, eshdat, a fiery decree. Why from his side? Why does this go from his side? Jesus was pierced in his side on Calvary in order to bring forth the word. That Oh my gosh, this is such a promised word of the Almighty Heavenly Father. You see, in the beginning, let's go back. I don't even have this in there, but let's just, let's just go there. Genesis. I, I, I tell you this one so often. But I don't even realize sometimes the connection of all these things, right? In Genesis, we're at Genesis. We're going to go to chapter 2, I believe it is. Um, ooh. Oh, by the way, I, I, I've got to go into this issue about Adam. I was listening. Uh, this one guy sent me some videos about um, the, the true Israelites and I'm seeing a big debate going on right now. And I'm telling you something. I'm very concerned. This could actually be the seeds of a, of a, um, of a racial uh, civil war in this nation. And it's all being done by religious false ideology on both sides. 
Uh, and this one guy was using the word Adam to justify the white race are the true Israelites, and it's the Germanic uh, uh, Europeans. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, and then you have the black people that are, are believing to be the Hebrew Israelites, the true Hebrew Israelites. Uh, I watched an amazing uh, black brother and, and, an, and another minister really speak very well, uh, debunking this ideology. And, and, and granted, listen, there's good people on both sides of those ideas. But you know, when you go out there and you start bringing in all this controversy, you're just fueling fans of hatred. You know, who cares what side it is? Let's just stand with Jesus Christ and this is your brother. I don't care what color he is. He's your brother or your sister. You know, there, there's enough sin in Israel to go around for the entire planet. Who would want to claim that anyway right now? Anyway. All right, so we get here in Genesis chapter 2, and I've gone through this with you guys many times before. Then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Et Adam afad min By the way, that's where Adam gets his name and why he gets his name. Okay? Et uh, Adam. Okay? Uh, if you want to do the whole thing, Ve'yatzad Yehovah Elohim. Okay? And the Lord God or Jehovah God. Uh, et Adam, uh, which literally means the man, afad. Okay, it's kind of backwards the way it lays out. Uh, he forms him from, min ha'adama, from the earth. Adama, right there, that means earth. That's really where Adam gets his name. Now, there are some folks out there that believe it comes, you know, from... Oh, I don't even want to go into it. <laughs> I'll save that for later. They, they, they prove their theory that this is proves that that, that, uh, that Adam was a white man. Can you believe that? Uh, it's like the stupidest thing I've ever heard, right? Now, granted, the word dom is in there in Adam, right? Dom for blood. But Adama is the earth. But granted, from the dust of the earth... The afar, that's the word dust, afar, uh, mean from the dust of the earth. That transforms into every cell of your body, including your blood. All right? So, yeah, I get that. Now, anyway, after he forms that man, it says, that He breathes in his nostrils the very breath or the very life of God. Remember when Jesus over in the New Testament after his resurrection he breathed on his apostles he said receive ye the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. And then what do we see in Acts? Cloven tongues like as of fire was hovering over every one of them in the upper room. There you have it. This is what's taking place. This is the axe. Okay? Now, and at the same time, it's not only just the axe, but it is that fiery law or that fiery decree that from his side, Mimenu Ishdat, from his side goes forth the decree of the king. And that decree was eternal life. Because why? You see, oh my goodness. You remember when back in the wilderness journey and the Israelites, they were complaining of, uh, over in the book of Numbers. They had no fish, they had no melon. They were all upset about that. And God gets angry with them and he sends in a bunch of serpents and bites them and kills a lot of them. 
Now, I have some issues there, like I've quoted Jesus many times when Jesus says, which one of you being a good parent, you know, your child asks you for a fish, would you give him a snake? I think Jesus is trying to get you to think a little deeper. He said, if you being good know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would your heavenly father give good gifts to them that love him? But nonetheless, this is where we get the fiery pole serpent. The serpent was put up on the pole and, and God said, look and live. That was a type and an analogy of what happened in the wilderness journey. You notice, see right here in verse 4, Moses commanded us a law and inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. That, that, that was the Torah. And those five books of Moses were given to the children of Jacob. But that one that Moses spoke about that was coming, a prophet likened unto me, who you were to hear, every word you're to hear, he comes with a fiery decree from his side. Not his right hand. You could say right hand if you want to. It won't make no difference. Why? Because Jesus said at the right hand of God. He is the right hand power of Almighty God. So whatever he decrees is decreed. Because why? He's the king. He is Melchizedek. Mm. Melech Zadik, right? That's what Melchizedek, Melchizedek's name means. A righteous king. Wow, I'm blown away by all of this. I don't know about you, but I'm blown away by this, right? So anyway, so from his side, when his side was opened up, and you know, I always thought he was probably stabbed in his left side, and the blood and the water came out according to what John said, but John never says what side. Nowhere in the scripture does it say what side, but you know what's odd? Do you know the Catholic Church believes he was stabbed in his right side? And I don't agree very much with the Catholic Church in the first place on just about anything. But I will have to agree with them on this thought here because they give a good reasoning for it. They point out that no, there is no historical evidence to know what side Jesus was stabbed on by the soldier when he put the spear into his side. They do believe it pierced both lungs and pierced his heart as well which would fulfill scripture where uh, when uh, Mary, you know, she was told that it would pierce her heart. That was a prophecy of Jesus, that spear piercing his heart, right? But their argument was Jesus spoke about those that were on his right side. And so their thought was the blood had to have come out the right side of his body and the water separated as a sign or an allegory uh, for this to be so. I, I can't get into all that. That's too complicated. But nonetheless, I thought it's a nice theory. Again, just a theory. We don't know. But from his right side goes forth a fiery decree. So, and, and by the way, if you go and you look, oh goodness, that's going to give me, that's, we're going to get into another one now, right? Now, that's just where God breathes into his nostrils. He becomes what? That's a singular right there, that last word right there. Chaya, singular life. Here, Chaim, plural. Why? Because Eve is in the same body. Okay. Now, we got to go into chapter three. Maybe is it chapter three or is it later here? Let's see. Okay. No, it's in chapter two here. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. All right. 
We get down to verse 23, and the man said, this is, oh, wait a minute, it's already happened. Let me back up. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the place with the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he woman and brought her unto the man. Okay, I was thinking that it actually spoke of which side he took that. They say a rib. There is a major debate over that, too. Even in ancient documents I've read about, there is a debate about that. Um, but a lot of times they say it was uh, it was a rib from underneath his heart. There again, that's theory, and I wish I had time to go into that, search for it, see if I could find an answer to that, but I don't, so we'll skip that and move forward. All right, now, we get into all these decrees, right? This is what's... Oh, by the way, the Jude. That was the other one too, right? Because why? Jude is writing, I love it. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about with the winds, trees whose fruit withered without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. He's talking about false Christians that come in among you right? Raging waves of sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, to convince all that are ungodly among them, all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And generally that is believed to be a prophecy of Jesus coming with ten thousands of his saints, or holy ones, as it were. So another fascinating parallel to Deuteronomy uh, 33, where it says here, um, he came with ten thousands of saints. It's actually the word in Hebrew is, um, it doesn't say ten thousand, but it's it's me, which is from, the, the mem right there is from uh, ribabot, which is just like an unknown number. It's just like so many. Okay, Raba is a lot, but ribabot is a plural of a lot. And that's why they use, they translate that as, as ten thousands of his saints, uh, or holy ones in this case here, because it just says kadosh. All right, there we go right there. There's the word for holy there, kadosh. All right, let's move on. Uh, like I said, I'm going deeper with you guys here. And again, we remember, I, 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 got, I got into this mainly because I was doing some research on the third temple because it is a violation. It is the Antichrist spirit and uh, that is going to build the third temple. That lets you know Israel today trying to bring about a third temple is an Antichrist move. All right, let's, let's go back into the reminder of that. And he shall speak words against the Most High. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High. He shall think to change the season and the law. Now, oddly, the word time is not in here. Okay, not in the, not in the respect of changing the law. Now, a lot of people misconstrue this and they think that it's the word Torah. And so this big jump from all different types of walks of life, uh, I think the Seventh-day Adventists, they use this scripture here and they say it's the Catholic Church because they changed the Sabbath of Saturday to Sunday, and they call it the Sunday law, and so therefore they violated God's law, God's Torah, that he gave Moses on Mount Sinai, he violated that, and they changed the law, and so therefore they're looking at this and saying that. I'm really, it's sad and shocking, such scholars amongst the uh, Adventists uh, that came up with this nonsense because you guys should have known that it's the word dat and not the word Torah. 
And the word dot, like I said, other than Deuteronomy 33, where it's talking about Jesus as the king, which is the amazing prophecy I got today, um, the word dot is used in the book of Daniel, it's used in the book of Esther, and it's used in the book of Ezra. And in all cases, it refers to a decree. And it's actually what it means is decree. All right? Now, so, but there is one coming, and he's going to think that he can change the season and the decree. What decree is he talking about, though? That's what's important to know. Okay? And Daniel, like in the case of Ezra, okay, Artaxerxes, king of kings, unto Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law, of the God of heaven, and so forth, and now... I make a decree that all they of the people of Israel and their priests and their Levites in my realm that are minded of their own free will to go with thee to Jerusalem, go for as thou art sent of the king and his seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem according to the law of thy God which is in thy hand. Now he actually calls the law of their God a dot also right there, because in his mind, according to the law of thy God, he considers their God to be a king of Israel and that he gives, gives decrees as well. So I don't fault Artaxerxes from saying that. The scribe, and he, and he says, unto Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven. And again, he does it, why? Because he figures he's the king. I make a decree, see? Manishim taim dai kol metinadav. And he goes on and on and on about this, right? He said, I make a decree that all of the people of Israel, they, they, get, they get to return. Basically, what are you going to do? They're going to go and build the temple and to carry the silver and the gold which, you get, which the king and his counselors have freely offered unto the God of Israel whose habitation is in Jerusalem. By the way, that's another reason why he calls everything that God does a dot, a decree. Because he figures their God sits in their temple. So he gives all these instructions to uh, Ezra to return to build the third temple. Now, so what is, and by the way, in Esther, here we go right here, Esther, the king also does a decree. The king said unto the wise men of the new times, uh, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. Right? Right? Uh, and it gets on further down. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to the law? For as much as she hath not done the bidding of the king Asherah by the chamberlains. And then, you know, he bring, you know, his decree, his decree that his law is a decree. By the way, a decree is not everlasting. And again, like I mentioned, Ezra could write about it that way. And the king, because the king is given command, and he's assuming that the God of Israel's law is like a decree. So when Daniel writes about it, though, and, um, and by the way, Daniel does know the difference between the law of God and the law of the king. Because he writes here in verse 11 of chapter 9, I believe it is, all Israel have transgressed thy law and have turned aside so as not to hearken unto thy voice. And here he goes right here. See? Veko Yisrael avaru et Torah techa. Torah is for the word Torah. Techa. They have transgressed your law. And again, Betorah betorot Moshe. Uh, and uh, and upon us the curse and the oath that is written in the law of Moses. 
literally should be the laws of Moses because they pluralize it. Betorot uh, Moshe should be written in the laws of Moses, the servant of God, for we have sinned against him. So Daniel knew the difference when he's writing about these uh, law between the law and the decree. But in let's see, in Dan and also in Daniel chapter two, again he speaks of it here. Uh, and by the way, this, no, this is different here. This here goes to show there is one that changes times and seasons, but not the law. Daniel spoke and said, Blessed be the name of God from everlasting even to everlasting, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep secret things. He knoweth what is in darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I like that one part right there. And the light dwelleth with him. Isn't that beautiful? Do, do you know what, why I like that? Here it is right there. They, they actually, when you see the highlighted here, that's because there's two different ways it's spelled. Okay. u na ho which is and the light, and here it is, Ima, with him, Sharesh. And the light dwells with him. It's not in him, it dwells with him. Jesus Christ is that light. There's a lot could be said on that. I'll just kind of leave it at that for right now. Going back now. So we come back then to that decree right here. Because this one here. See, Daniel shows how that the God of heaven, he can change times and seasons. But over here in Daniel chapter 7, there comes one that's going to think that he can change the season and the law or the decree. In other words, it shows he's kind of, he's trying to be like God, but he's not. And it, notice what it says here. And it's for the ten horns, and out of this kingdom shall ten kings arise, and another shall arise after them. And he shall be diverse from the former. He shall put down three kings, and he shall speak words against the Most High. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And he shall think to change the seasons and the, let's just use the right word, decree. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a half a time. So he thinks to do it and it's going to be permitted. But the judgment shall sit, his dominion shall be taken away to, the, to be consumed and to be destroyed unto the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Now, which their kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey them. The point is here, Artaxerxes gave that decree, that dot, to go and rebuild the temple, to restore Jerusalem. Why? Because the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, was coming in the days of 2,000 years ago. But Daniel also saw these visions. And he saw there was going to be one that would raise up that thinks he can change the season and the law or that decree doesn't change the time, times given to him, but he doesn't change the time. He changes the season and the decree. So the decree was given by Artaxerxes, uh, Darius, Cyrus, all of these guys. They upheld the decree by Artaxerxes to make sure Israel goes and builds their third temple, or second temple it should be called. 
And they did exactly that. And Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, he did come. He fulfilled all the prophecies that were written about him. And then it was destroyed, as he prophesied it would be. But what's going to be given into the hand of this false leader, it doesn't even call him, he's not even called, um, well, I guess he's considered to be one of the kings. Let's see. And as for the ten horns out of this kingdom shall ten kings arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the former, and he shall put down three kings. So whoever goes to build that third temple in Israel is going to fulfill this prophecy in Daniel, where they think they can change the season and the decree, the decree of Artaxerxes, and they think that they can build a temple and that it's going to be honored by God. It will not. I hate to tell you, but it will not. The only other time we have a change of the law was when we read in Hebrews chapter 7, for the priesthood being changed, there is a made a necessity a change also of the law. And why? That would actually match the scripture of Deuteronomy 33, because from his side will go forth a fiery decree. Because Jesus as king has to correct all those mistakes. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And yet it is far more evident for after that the similitude of Melchizedek. There we go, the righteous king. There ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of the carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is a verily a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and unprofitableness thereof, thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. What an amazing, amazing uh, message there. Uh, listen, I hope, let me make sure we were recording. Yep, we are. I hope this is a blessing to you. Again, don't forget, uh, this, of course, is on Patreon, this extended version of this message. But if you want to come and meet us there in Atlanta, uh, it'll be in the description of the video there. Uh, we're going to be there. Now, this is not a conference we're putting together. I want to make sure I make that clear. We're not speaking at this. This is a life wave uh, uh, just a one evening conference there. If you're interested in LifeWave products, we'd love to meet you there. Uh, but you'd have to be there for that reason. Uh, that's what this is all about. And believe me, it'd be boring if you weren't. So anyway, come join us. We'd love to be able to see you there. God bless you and thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.